What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Welcome back to my channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13, Episode 10. So, we are back. Utica has survived the lip sync. Elliot with the T has gone home. Don't know if I agree with it, but whatever. We are here. Um, Elliot's, I mean, Utica said that, hey, it was exhilarating being in the bottom and I think what Utica was trying to say was there was an adrenaline there. Like, nobody wants to be in the bottom, but there was, like, this adrenaline that was pumping. And, and you know, it, it. and I think it also might have, you know, lit up a fire up under him, too. You know what I'm saying? Um, we also had a good conversation with um, Simone about her look. And, you know, Simone's thing is, I always want to be authentically black. Like, at the end of the day, yes, I'm a queen. Yes, I'm a polished and pretty queen. But, at the, but before, but, you know, before all of that, I'm black. And I want to always make sure that I am relating that in my drag. And I was absolutely here for it. And if you look back and you think back on a lot of her run runways, I mean, my favorite runway is still when she had that, neck piece and the braids and her hair spelled out in a bit that is still probably one of my favorite runways ever i mean it, it just it just was so i was here for it and again i still think that that was a moment um and i can appreciate that one it was mentioned um even though she was safe last week rue mentioned it and two i can appreciate the fact that um it was mentioned again this week so we move into um, our, really wasn't a mini challenge, right? The ladies are meeting up with, um, hold on, let me go back to my notes, child. Char Margolis, who is a psychic. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I ain't go to Google her. So I don't know if this was real or fake, okay? But she's a psychic, and so the, the, um, the queens went to go talk to her. And it was funny because she brought up things that, I feel like she brought up things that could have been told to her through the their interviews, you know, things about their past. Um, I think she channeled Utica with a cow named, I think, Cleo or something. Um, she challenged... Um, now, one thing she did say was she came to um, um, Candy and was like, is there somebody here that you didn't like at first but you like now? And she said, yeah, Rosé. Now, again, I think... Do I think that there's some people who are clairvoyant and have a, and have the power? Yeah, I do. Do I think everybody who claims to be does? No. But I'm just saying in this particular situation, a lot of the things that she said, I don't think it took a psychic. Like in most situations, when you meet somebody, you have a first impression. And a lot of times that impression has changed. So for Candy to have had one impression of Rosé and then change that impression, that's not weird that's not out of the normal or out of the ordinary then we had um we found out that rose and denali have like a little flirty flirty thing going on even though rose said uh-uh be clear she said i'm not saying that they're in a relationship rose was like thank you please be clear because i got a whole boyfriend and that's gonna be a problem you know <laughs> Um, but what ended up happening was they went back to the workroom and Rue said, based on her reads of them, I'm sure this, and I'm sure this was a longer scene that they edited down, you know, um, based on her reads of them, she's pairing them up. Now, this is traditionally the makeover challenge. And normally they bring people in. We've had husbands, um, we've had wives. I mean, we've had not husbands, I'm sorry. Yeah. Significant others are husbands. We had one time the cameraman and the crew. One time we had um, full-figured, you know, ladies. So there usually is the time when regular people come in and the queens make them into their, you know, a member of their family. So they have to show some sort of an aesthetic that you would say, oh, that's Tina Burner because I see yellow, orange, you know, red, whatever. Um... But because of COVID, they're going to make each other over, right? And so they paired them up. So we have Tina with Rosé, which I thought was hilarious because we know that Tina and Rosé have had this little nip, nip, nip thing even before they came on the show. So that, I thought that was very interesting. Denali and Olivia. 
Utica and Simone, which, of course, you're talking about opposites attracting, honey, and Candy and Got Mick. Now, the thing with Candy and Got Mick is, this is no disrespect because clearly I am a full-figured woman myself. Candy is a full-figured queen. Got Mick is probably the smallest little twig they have on the show. So, I think that they were purposely, some of these pairs were obvious why these people were paired together. Others, maybe not so much. Um... And so, this episode was probably longer than it needed to be because they gave us a whole scene of them. Well, I shouldn't say it was, I shouldn't say that. So, we saw Rosé and Tina. And again, Rosé does, Tina's aesthetic is not her aesthetic. Um, but Tina, you know, they found an outfit for her to wear that they agreed on. Same thing with Rosé. Um... The biggest conflicts, because again, I ain't gonna get into that. The biggest conflicts, I'm not, or, or conversations, one, because we had Candy and Got Mick, and they couldn't just pull something out of their closet. You know, like with Denali and Olivia, they can just pull something out of the closet and exchange it. Whereas with Got Mick and Candy, you know, they had to pull out the, the shears and the sewing machine and come up with something because it just wasn't that. It's just not that easy. Um, but the biggest conversation was Utica and Simone. One, Utica was like, I want to turn this in. I want, you know, I consider myself a work of art, a work of walking art. And so she had a couple of outfits for Simone that were not traditional gown outfit type things. And it was this one piece where there were no arms. You just had to kind of do like this. And Utica explained it in such a way about, you know, um, the you're talking about restraint and how you have to be, even even when the restraints are on you, you can still be constantly in motion. And she gave this whole thing that by the time she got done, Simone was like, huh, still not my thing, but I hear you. I see where you're coming from with this, right? And... So Simone was like, I, I, I still think Utica a little crazy, okay? But I see her vision a little bit better. Then Utica, I mean, then Simone wanted to put Utica in a Baps-inspired outfit. Now, if you don't know what Baps is, Baps is the cult classic amongst the, you know, amongst us. You know, Halle Berry, um, Natalie, um, was it Natalie? This, this, I can't, I want to mispronounce her last name. Unfortunately, she passed away earlier this year. I mean, earlier last year. And DeSantis, I think, DeSantis. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And I apologize for not saying her name wrong, right. Um, but it was very exaggerated. The big hair, the crazy outfits, you know, the hair show, out, you know, wigs and stuff like that. And Utica sort of had the same concern as she had last week with doing a Bob Ross um, afro. Now, I gave you some hell last week, Utica, about that Bob Ross situation because I really don't think it was as much about you worrying about cultural appropriation as it was you wanted to wear that damn squirrel wig. But this week, I do understand your concern. And it could have gone really, really wrong. You know, people could... Because here, let's be clear. Let, let, let's just have a moment for a second. The drag race super fans, because I'm not going to put everybody in this category. The drag race super fans do a lot. They do a lot. They're nasty, disrespectful, racist. Like, they do a lot. And again, I'm talking about the super fans. I'm not talking about these, the average person. I'm talking about these people that do a lot, okay? And the reality of the situation is, I, if you're someone who's been watching this, you know what it is. You know what it is. And... I understand Utica's concern. Something that is that inspired and so ethnic, for lack of a better word. Um, two things, though. One, they did talk to Rue about it. And Rue was like, I understand where you're coming from. And I understand, she said, but I'm going to say this. Anything that is done in love and with good intentions, I think it's fine. She said it's all about how well he this is it. It's all about how you present it 
and, and what you put out there. And Utica was really, really on the fence for a long time about it. And really, really on the fence. Um, she, she, but she ultimately decided to do it. Um, and then the workroom conversations were just about family and, and, you know, being in this family and who inspired me to do this and who inspired me to do that, you know. And the ladies had to practice each other's walk. And again, you know, Utica normally gives you this whole, you know, coming down the, the runway, but she had to learn how to do a Simone walk, honey, and sachet. And be, and be pageant and queen and regal and walk with her straight up, you know. And the judges said something later on in the episode that I thought about. They said that for the first time, it seemed like Utica was walking straight up and not hunching. And I wonder because of her height, if that is something she's learned to do so that she does not stand out. And I'm not even talking about so much as far as drag, but just in life in general. You know, um, Utica is very tall, you know, and then you add some heels, I mean, baby. And I just wonder if that is something that Utica has done as a defense, that, that she doesn't walk straight up and straight and, and you know, strut. You know, it's just interesting. I mean, that's just an observation, child. That ain't, you know, I ain't nobody's Dr. Phil. It's just an observation. Anyway. So they all had to learn each other's walk. I mean, Rose and Tina Burner got Mick and and um, um, Candy were hilarious because got Mick was trying to be Candy and be Bronx and Banji, as she would say, and it was hilarious. She couldn't even she she couldn't stop giggling. She could not stop giggling the whole time they were doing it. It was hilarious. Um, but then the runways came. The runways came, and I'm going to say this for myself. I was, I was pretty pleasantly, um, surprised, you know, um, and through them talking, you got an opportunity to hear what, what their trademark was, what their aesthetic was, what they thought they were giving to the world. So Rosé comes down the runway in, you know, 19, she calls it, she called it 1950s, um, uh, housewife, right? And she even had a reveal. Now we know... Tina Burner is good for a reveal. Now, most of the time, I don't like the reveals. They be ugly, and they don't, they don't, they not, they don't flow. And it was really the same thing with this one, because she came out in this 1950s housewife house dress that flared out, and then the reveal was like this leopard print situation, you know. But it was, it was cool, and she had this big red wig, and, you know, she had the Tina Burner eye, and, you know, the, the lipstick and everything. So it was there. It was definitely there. On the other hand, we had uh, Tina in a Rosé outfit. Now, I definitely could see Rosé in that outfit, but I don't know if I necessarily saw Rosé in the outfit, you know, once Tina Burner was there with the makeup and hair and everything. Eh. Now, was it horrible? No, but it was not as obvious and blatant to me as some of the others were. So then we had Denali and Olivia. So um, Olivia came down in this white ruffle tool outfit i mean blue excuse me blue 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 with a long blue uh long blonde wig um with a you know with a with a braid and everything um i thought she looked beautiful she did the the ice skate walk you know as if she could be on ice skates like denali would have been but it was more of a walk um and i thought she looked beautiful but again you know didn't wow me. Denali came down with a gown on and a purse. And, I mean, she did the whole Olivia walk and things like that. Uh, again, it, it was cute. I don't know if I saw a lot of Olivia in her. Um, other than them dimples. You know, both of them got them dimples, honey. Uh, but definitely, I felt like that's something Olivia would wear. I could definitely see Olivia in it. I mean, which, of course, is Olivia's, you know, Olivia dress. Um... Next we have, let me go to my notes, let me finish up my notes, Simone um, and Utica. I thought Simone did an excellent job of coming down that runway, looking like Utica doing the whole awkward, you know, walk that Utica does. And she wore the piece where the arms don't come out, so she had this whole arm thing working. And she had this, you know, bodysuit underneath. I feel like Simone and the makeup was, was, was really, really cute. I feel like Simone, I, I was here for it. Um... But Utica gave it to me. And y'all know I gave Utica a lot of hell last week because I started off really, really liking Utica. And she's really been kind of disappointing me. 
Um, oh, that's the other thing. Utica, um, Timon had this beautiful headpiece. The hair was braided up with different colors, and it had flowers coming out. It was really, really cute. It was a whole moment. I, I honestly can say it was a whole moment. Um, Utica did the baps, baby. She had the hair, the baps hair with the blonde and the, the intertwining, you know, pattern, and it was a leopard print suit, and her makeup was cute. It was everything. I thought it was absolutely everything. I thought it was absolutely everything. And she strutted down that runway like Simone would strut down that runway. There was no Utica in it for me. No Utica in it for me. Um, Denali and, oh, I'm sorry, Got Mick and um, Candy. So God Mick had on like a bodysuit with like a fiery red head and hat and she did the whole, you know, I'm from the hood walk and I don't know if I saw Candy Muse that much in her, honestly, uh, personally, but okay. And then Candy absolutely had on a God Mick outfit. I mean, the chest was out, she just had pasties on her nipples. She had rough, you know, the, the tool. She had the white face paint um, with the black lip and the, the exaggerated um, yellow greenish wig. It, it was definitely a Got Mick outfit. I absolutely saw Got Mick in the outfit. I ain't gonna say I like the outfit, but I saw Got Mick in the outfit. Like I said, I don't know if I like the outfit that much. Um, I'm sorry. Um, now then, you know, Rue did the question that I absolutely positively hate. Who do you think should go home? And I'm going to tell you the reason why I hate it. Well, I hate it for a lot of reasons. I hate it because they put people on the spot. Um, and I hate it because I feel like there's one person that always gets piled on. Sometimes it's deserved, sometimes not so much. Tonight, I feel like that's what happened with Olivia. Uh, Rosé said Olivia, Tina said Olivia, Olivia said Utica, Denali said Candy, Simone said Utica, Utica said Olivia, I mean, hmm, Simone said Olivia, Utica said Olivia, Got Mick said Olivia, Candy said Olivia. And when they got to Candy, not only did Candy say Olivia, Candy gave a whole speech that ain't nobody asked for. Now, I do feel like it might have been edited, but ain't nobody asked for all of that. She went off about how we had the most challenge out of everybody because of our body type. We we had the biggest challenge out of everybody, and there's no reason why anybody came on this stage half-stepping it. Girl, you're not a judge. See, that's why I don't nobody like you, Candy, because... Ain't nobody asked for all of that. Rue asked one question that gave you a, that gave a one word answer. She did not ask for no soliloquy or speech. Now maybe behind the scenes they asked you why, but in front of me I didn't hear why. Anyway, so we get down to it, and um, Rue makes her decision about top and bottom. Now. Simone and Utica won, which they deserved. That, that was a well-deserved win. And, and the bottom was Got Mick and, uh, I mean, Lord, not Got Mick, Denali and Olivia. Now, I got a couple of problems with this situation. One, oh, Lonnie Love was the guest judge this week. They sang, they lip sync to Shackles by Mary Mary. So, first of all, can we think about the irony that Mary Mary was the song? Because we all know how Tina Campbell feel about homosexuality. Then, just the fact that they up there doing... But I've seen drag queens do gospel before, so I ain't... That part wasn't even tripping. I just thought it was interesting that it was a Mary Mary song. <laughs> I guess it could have been Kim Burrell. <laughs> anyway, moving on. The other problem I have with this is... Okay, so I personally feel like Denali's lip sync was went along with the song a lot better. Like, I felt like she understood that this was a gospel song and she was doing gospel-type things. You know, she was pointing up to the sky. She was looking up. She was... I just, honestly, if it were me, I feel like Denali did a better job. The other reason why I feel like Denali, um, 
because Um, Denali went home. Simone stayed. I mean, Olivia stayed. But here's my problem. If the reason why they're... Because the whole criticism... Nobody criticized what Denali did with Olivia. Everybody criticized what Olivia did with Denali, including the judges. Not just the, the panel, but including the judges. They felt like Denali did not look enough like Olivia. So here's my problem with this whole thought process. If Olivia is the one that did Denali's painting, and Olivia is the one that dressed Denali, and Denali was supposed to resemble and look like Olivia. Why Denali the one going home? I know it's a group challenge, y'all, and I know that, you know, sometimes that's how shit goes, but I just feel like here's a blatant example of we were just, it was just Denali's time to go home. And my thing is, don't make it look so obvious. Because... There was no reason for Denali to go home. Not now. Not like that. Like, I mean, was it time for Denali to go home? Yeah. But not that way. Not that way. That's my opinion. Anyway, that's what it is. That's RuPaul. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all agree, disagree? Let's talk about it. Peace.